This is a full in-depth review of the language learning program Glossica. Now this video is unsponsored, unaffiliated and as you can see unabridged and in fact this is only part one of two because Glossica is A quite well known, B quite extensive and C quite expensive. So in my efforts to make the most useful language learning content possible, I made this video unsponsored and unaffiliated deliberately. If I had contacted Glossica and said, you know, I'm gonna review Glossica, so how about it kind of thing, they may have said yes, or they may not have, I don't know, but companies do tend to say yes because I've got blue backlighting and that's bloody irresistible. But I didn't do that so that I could make the review as neutral as possible. So if you appreciate the time and effort that's gone into this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon or use any of the links in the description which also give you discounts on other language learning apps and stuff like that or just leave me a comment or even just watch this video a long way through I guarantee you that it's better than a Netflix series it all helps and I appreciate your time so new shard it Glossica is a website. It's actually not an app. If I refer to it throughout this review as an app, that's just because I'm used to referring to these things as an app, but it is in fact just a website. Now, I'm Gen Y, so I like to think of myself as an experienced all-rounder when it comes to various technology. What I'm trying to say is that it doesn't freak me out that I have to use a browser to access Glossica, but it will put some people off. And it also means, and this one's kind of significant, that Glossica save money on critical changes that have to be made when iOS or Android update and their competitors have to make changes just to keep their app working. Glossica don't have to do that. They just have to keep a website working. But it looks like at times they struggle with even that. I wouldn't describe the website as clunky, but I wouldn't describe it as smooth and issues can crop up and the whole thing is pretty basic. I mean, it's not super basic and I'm not saying that that is a bad thing, but don't expect a very bells and whistles kind of experience. It's kind of like riding a bike with a few gears as opposed to driving a Formula One car. Now I'm going to start with a big pro of Glossica before we get into the not inconsiderable cons, and that is the range of languages. Definitely big props to Glossica here for stretching outside of the normal German, French, Spanish, and by that I mean well outside. Even going so far as to teach some smaller dialects of Chinese, there's stuff like Uzbek, Kazakh, Manx, Belarusian, Belarusian? Belarusian. Belarusian. I'm gonna go with Belarusian. Lots of great stuff, including a new object of my desire that I spotted and thought, oh, you temptress you. I will use your seductive wares only to test Glossica. But then her seductive wares got the better of me and now I'm hooked, but I can't say who she is because our passion is still sinful and unofficial. What am I talking about? Yeah, look, okay, I started messing around with a new language on Glossica and then on other platforms and even watching some stuff in Netflix. And I think I'm in love and I want to... <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, I have a script here. I know what we were talking about. That was just pretend. They've got a great range of languages. <laughs> And some of the more obscure and in fact endangered languages on there, such as Scots Gaelic, are actually completely for free. And that's not limited in any way. It's not a half course or anything. It's just openly free, which is great. And I will come back to my thoughts on the free courses versus the rest of them a little bit later. But just in general, the range of languages and the fact that you can study any of the languages from almost any of the others, we're off to a good start. So the first thing you're going to encounter when you create an account and choose a language is the placement test. But with very few exceptions, I cannot see that anyone would benefit at all from doing the placement test. It is at best irrelevant to Glossica's own methodology and at worst straight up buggy and should be avoided like the plague. The first thing I did was the Swedish placement test in which I got everything right, obviously. So it said, okay, we're going to start you off at B2, which is to be expected because that's the highest level that they have. But then I realized that I don't want that because if you place high in their course, then all the things in that course that you would have needed to get to that level become inaccessible to you. Like they just disappeared. You can't go back and find them anywhere. They're just gone. But obviously to do my review, I needed to see the sentences. That's why I chose Swedish and did a placement test so that I could actually see the material that you're supposed to learn with. So I tried to do another placement test, but this time I got everything deliberately wrong. Well, <laughs> yeah, that should work. So naive. In the second placement test, it asked me two questions, which were both the same. So that's actually one question question twice and on getting that question wrong deliberately both times 
it said, okay, we'll start you off at B2. And this kept happening. I tested this in a number of languages with different variables and it was equally useless across the board. Now that's one problem being that you seem unable to test lower than you once tested. But the real problem here occurs when that combines with the fact that the tests are simply too easy. I also placed at the top of its French program with stunning ease and I'm not B2 in French. I also placed at the top of its German program also with ease and I'm not A2 in German and I also placed at the top of its Russian program. My Russian level is so low that it is better for you not to speak Russian to me. If you want me to get what you're saying, just don't say anything and that'll work out better than Russian. But in the Russian test, I sort of made an educated guess and I got a bit lucky and just happened to get the first question right. And the second question was, the same. It was the same question, so guess what happened there? Oh, I got that right too. And remember what I said before, when you do a placement test, if you place anywhere at all in the course, it removes everything that it considers to be lower than your level. And in this case, that's like thousands of sentences. Thousands. To me, that is completely backwards. When I do a placement test on language learning apps, I do it in order to see all the material that is available in the app. I essentially do it to kind of crack the material open, if you get me. And to a lot of people, I actually recommend cheating on placement tests for precisely that reason. For example, on Duolingo. I don't need Duolingo gatekeeping most of the tree. I want to be able to do the course at my leisure, and so I blatantly cheat on the test. Not so that I can be told that I'm a B2 in Romanian when I'm not, but so that I can learn Romanian at my own pace. Whereas on Glossiger, you can only see material that you have actually done. Now, I did come up with a trick to get it to show me lots and lots of Swedish sentences so that I could do this review, but I shouldn't have to crypto mine the system. Just show me the sentences. It's bad enough that the placement tests are buggy and inaccurate, but it's unfathomable that it doesn't then show me the material. As far as I'm concerned, this goes against Glossika's very own methodology, which is mass sentence mining. Even if I were a B2 in Dutch, their claim is that it would be beneficial for me to hear tons and tons of Dutch sentences in thousands of different permutations. Just because those sentences are theoretically within my scope of knowledge, and by the way, that's based on like four test responses, so who even knows anyway, that doesn't mean that I should never see or hear them again. So I am telling you, do not use the placement test feature, and Glossika, if you're watching, please fix the placement test or remove it entirely. But before I get too negative about all of this, you may have noticed that I did just touch on a pro, which is that there are an insane number of sentences. I don't know exactly how many, and it will vary slightly from language to language, but with Swedish, there are at least 6,000 sentences. And it may even be a lot more than that, because that's assuming that there's an equal number for each stage, which could be an underestimation. So they're certainly not skimping on sheer quantity of material. However, this becomes a lot less impressive when you look at the quality of the translations or just the naturalness of the target language. Now, I am judging Swedish only here because it's the only language that I speak well enough to say, okay, that's right, that's wrong, and that's kind of right, but it's a little bit weird. But other people have told me that it is the same in their language. Now, it's certainly not a case of more wrong than right, but it's a case of reasonably frequent mistakes or less than ideal uses of the language. At a rough count, it seems to be about 7 to 8% of sentences which are either not accurate translations of the English, that is, they just mean something different, or they're very unidiomatic uses of Swedish, or occasionally they're just straight up wrong. Now, the reason that I was looking so carefully at this was that I've had a number of people in a number of different target languages tell me that Glossika has mistakes all over the place. And I do remember trying it about three years ago and finding a very clear mistranslation, like 100% this does not mean this. So I knew that this was an issue that I needed to look at and I'm very disappointed to find that this is still a plaguing issue. In my books, this isn't the end of the world because I would use something like Glossika to help make native content more comprehensible. That's all I want to use any program for. 
I'm not trying to memorize translations, so I'm probably not going to learn that mistake, but it can still be very confusing when you're first starting out, as well as just being unprofessional. And what's really weird is, one of the most glaring errors I found was wrong in that sentence, of course, but right in a number of other sentences which happen to contain that construction within it. And it's also strange that it has native audio, meaning that a native speaker recorded this sentence. And I'm kind of disappointed in my Swedish brethren that no one ever looked at some of these sentences and said, the the hard effect is yet the constant. Back to the pros for a second. I like its system of displaying progress, which is to display a percentage of the sentences you've done but not of the total number, rather it's a percentage of the amount of each stage that you've done. So you'll do like 25 sentences, and that would actually be less than half a percent of the whole course, but you'll see an increase of say about 2% of the stage that you're in, like A2 low or A2 high or wherever it is that you're up to. That way it displays that you are progressing through this ocean of sentences without being so depressing as to say, oh, you just did two hours? That's like 0.3%. Now there was a time in my testing when I wondered, do you just sit here watching it play through sentences for like the rest of your life? Because that's what it defaults to. It literally just plays through sentences in the target language a number of times. You don't have to answer anything, you don't click on anything, it's just in autoplay. I immediately found where you can tweak things, like whether you want to hear the target language sentence once or twice, how long you want there to be between sentences, etc, etc. But initially, I didn't spot the switch that you need to turn off in order to have it make you enter the sentence. And whether or not this is better for acquisition in the long term, I don't know, that's not what I'm getting at. But I do prefer it because I found that when I was just watching sentences play through in a language that I didn't understand at all, I found I wasn't remembering anything. And I'm just sitting here watching a screen of essentially random symbols that I didn't understand. And what do you see in this picture? Uh, that's a squirrel doing Tai Chi. Hmm. Sehr interessant. A series in the target language would be much more beneficial and a lot more interesting. Why am I watching it just run through sentences? But then I worked out how to turn on what it calls practice mode, where you actually have to enter what it is that's being said, but then we run into more bugs and problems. Now I'll get to other languages in a second, but in Swedish, there's no option to turn off the target language text, meaning that if you have to write the Swedish for say, my house is big, the Swedish is written there in front of you. Can anyone not do this? Now this might be beneficial a couple of times, I get that, but sooner or later I'm going to want to learn to type it out from just hearing it. In some other languages it was different. It would actually obscure the target language so that first you could try doing it from just the translation, which I wouldn't actually recommend, and then you could try doing it from the target language audio, which I would recommend, and then if you need to, you can reveal the target language text. Now that's a big improvement. It's a huge improvement, and I don't understand how that feature is not available in Swedish or Serbian or Scots Gaelic and probably some other languages, because that's not language dependent. It's literally just obscuring a part of the screen. How hard is that? Now, here might be a good time to mention the potential SRS benefit, because a lot of people do like these kinds of things if they have a built-in SRS function. Glossika does have that, but if that's what you're going to use it for, in my opinion, it's not nearly customizable enough and it's the wrong way round and that can't be changed. By the wrong way round, I mean that you see your strong language, presumably English, and then you have to convert that into the target language. Now I'm coming at any app or program from the point of view of how much easier does it make target language content, native content, for me to understand. So in my opinion, all the exercises, but particularly any kind of SRS benefit that you would get from it, should actually show you the target language and check your understanding of that. But at the very, very least, that should be an option. You should be able to switch which way around you see them, but you can't. And that brings us to the issue of target languages with non-standard characters or non-Latin alphabet characters. I didn't actually find many languages that have the panel option of extra letters that aren't included in the normal Latin alphabet, but are required to type out that language. 
but for the ones that I did find, clicking on the letters does nothing. It doesn't work. So it's like this little shop window of extra letters that I could and should be using to type the target language, but sorry, shop's closed, please leave. Now I don't like being harsh. What is the Spanish for shut up? Just what were you thinking? This series is made by stupid people for stupid people. Well, that's just your opinion. Okay, maybe I do. <laughs> but here, I am not just being mean for the sake of it, but it really seems to me that at every turn, I found some feature or something that seems like they've said, no, that one's that one's out of order, mate. Um, come back next week, all right? Should be working then. Because it's there and looks like it's working, but it isn't. And it's the same for the settings for reps, as in repetitions. It's very customizable, so for that reason, I like it. Except that if I say that I want to do 20 new sentences a day, I will then get a lesson every day that has 20 sentences in it. That makes sense. Except that it doesn't because the 20 new sentences are actually four new sentences with five occurrences each. Glossika, did you just invent your own system for counting? You're a language learning program, not Pythagoras. 20 new sentences means 20 new sentences, not four sentences five times over. Did I just have to say that out loud? Now we're actually only half done here because I didn't think that a 35 minute review would be very popular. So in the second half of this review, I'm going to talk more about whether I actually think Glossika will work despite its many flaws and what I'm sure many people are interested to know, which is whether it justifies the price. So if that video is already out, then you can watch it right here. If it's not, then it should be out in a few days, so make sure you're subscribed and all that, and I'll see you in part two. Bye.